Welcome. I've went through all of the tutorials in Game Builder Garage. After every tutorial, you get a checkpoint, which has a bunch of tests to have you try the programming that was done throughout the lesson all by yourself. Just being able to edit a few things to solve a puzzle. I haven't done the last ones though, but I thought I would start from the beginning and go through all of these tests. I think that's by itself a pretty good introduction to how the game works. So in all these puzzles, all we have to do is make the person collect the apple. But something will be broken. You can't just go solving in any way you like. You only have a few options. So here this shows I can edit the output of the button, the input of the person, but nothing else, everything else will be disabled. But here all we really need is the person to jump, so easy. Push the button, the person jumps. Move with a control stick. I feel like it's the same puzzle. Problem here is we want to move left and right, but it's not hooked to left and right. Now it is. Alright, so I can't see what to do. Let's make the view so that I can't um I can't make it bigger. The apple is Where is the apple? Oh. It's really tiny behind his head. This is what happens when you break the apple. You win. Right, now I can Holy see. Alright. The block drops. We want it to not fall. So every object has properties. If it's movable, then it's affected by gravity, pushed by other things. Don't want that. Need it to be solid or we'll just walk through it. Technically don't need visible. I mean, that's optional. But uh, we don't want it to destroy other things. Could uh, just uncheck person from here. Uh, we'll go ahead and say not destructible too. If the person was destructive, which it is, then the box would be destroyed then too. Visible objects. Okay, so that's in the way, but this box up here is invisible. Now it's visible. Um, so what we want is for it to fall and destroy this box so it's out of the way. So we need it to be visible, solid so it interacts with other stuff, movable so gravity pulls it down, destructive. So it destroys the box. If I do that, that works, but it still stays. But if it's destructible, then it won't stay. Launch objects. It's, uh, that's certainly launching stuff. What settings can we change? The only thing I can do is the launch interval to make it launch very slowly. 
That's that's so slow. I mean, it, it works. I'd like to see it though. How about three? Look at those reflexes. Moving on. Okay, so... Person can't move, but the box can move, and it could push the apple to the person. So a moving object, we can control its position. So this will make the stick control its X. Easy. So the box isn't interested in our puzzle. All right, so box is moving. It'll move to the right if this is positive, left if it's negative. So right now it's getting three and moving to the right three. But if it's negative, it'll move left. That's slow. <laughs> I don't know that it'll make it. Nope. There's not enough friction. Plus it makes it. Okay, so when we break the boxes, that gets subtracted. So what probably happens is whenever the counters are equal, the box moves to the right. So when a box is destroyed, right now it's counting down on this counter. I think we want it to count up. Now if that number is five, the box moves to the right. That'll fix the counter and what we see. One, two, three, four, five. What's going on with the box this time? You want it to be a positive number, so one is less than two, and whenever the comparison's true, it'll send out a one to the X. I can move this time. So it seems there's two teleporters, but they don't actually affect him yet. So we have to teleport a person. So when a person overlaps this, it'll go in. And then they're both set to A, so it'll come out there. Okay, that's it for that set. Yeah, so I'm not controlling anything. We can change that. UFOs can move any three-dimensional way. Match those up. So I need the apple to push. I'm controlling this box, not the person. And if I could push the red box, then the apple would move. But we can't reach through this gap. But with this, we could reach through the gap if this were connected to the box. So I can connect this. So by connecting the bottom one, we're saying it's dependent on this one. So when this moves, this will move with it. Now we have to figure out where it's attached to the box. We want it on the right of the box, so we want the left side of this, which is this one, to be on the right side, what it's connected to. Okay, 
Make the person unbreakable. Let's see what I can do. I can jump. Can't really interact with that. Red kills everything. Okay, so we can't just say that the person's invincible. But the red thing is the one that's breaking everything. It's destructive. But we can destroy everything else. He was just going to ride the ball all the way out. Stopping with not. I think this was a weird one. Alright, so I'm not in control. Oh, not with a stick anyway. The Y button moves them both. So I only have the Y button. So we can make it so that while I'm pushing the Y button, one of them moves. While I'm not pushing the Y button, the other one moves. So since it put the knot down there, if we're pushing Y, box moves. If we're not pushing Y, person moves left, right. So when we're not pushing Y, this will be zero. This will make it a one, so he'll move to the right. Good. Nothing moving by default. Well, not really much I can do to set this up, but L and R need to both be pressed to send a signal out to the box. I was just making sure I can read the program to figure out what to do. Making a sloping road. Right, so this is using a hinge connector. So the apple hits it, but it rotates. But we want to not rotate all the way. So here's the sphere. Hinge connector puts the object, the bar, on top of it. When one moves, they all move. All right. But the hinge connector has a range. We could narrow it to say minus 30 degrees, positive 30 degrees. So it can only move that much in either way. But the apple just falls off. So we need to change the range so that it for sure is going to be tilted to the left. So that should be negative. Make the min the minimum like minus 30. Now by setting minus 90, oh, by setting minus 90, it could still move. So I could also just enter the same number. Now it's fixed and won't be able to rotate at all. No, 30 degrees is that way. Well, minus 30 degrees is that way, so not so negative. All right, so it moves down and stops. So, we have a sphere that you can't really see, because it's probably too small, or it's invisible. Yep, it's invisible. And we have a box connected to it, which is movable, so the apple pushes it down. And we have a slide connector. So the number going into it is how much Y is going to be changed. So, if the number coming in is 1, its Y is going to go toward the bottom of the screen. Or, uh, no, that's the opposite. Y is from the bottom of the screen up. So, 
we see the numbers getting smaller, so it's trying to push it downward. But then there's a range. So we need to mess with the range so that it will go down more. It looks like on the right, one block is one meter. Just guessing. Yeah, one. these are one meter long. So we need to go down one more. But I'll go ahead and make it four to show what too far is like. There's a teleporter down there that sucks everything away. It's only three. Is on start that's pushing to the left. Whoa. You can break that. Let's see us moving it. So a constant and a negative one is pushing it, so that pushes it left. What else is up here? So we have a trigger of when boxes are destroyed. But do I want the box? Okay, so when the box is destroyed, then if the box doesn't move the apple until then, then we'll get the apple. Okay, so instead of moving all the time, we only want to move if a box has been destroyed. So we can store if a box has been destroyed in the flag that will turn this on and it'll stay on. Now, if we multiply that by negative one. So before the flag gets turned on, zero times the negative one will be a zero, but after it's on, it'll be one times negative one. So this will only be negative one after the box is, after, after the box is destroyed. But before then it will move. I love it goes straight in, into his mouth. Okay, he's got a punch on this one. It just doesn't do anything. So, this first to destroy this box. Need to hook up the punch. So we want to destroy this box with a punch. So if this area is connected to the person, That'll be the area that we can then program the punch to work with. Uh, so the connection point is already set. Um, so this should be that the the left side of the destroy is in the front side of the person. Just assume that that's right. So right now when the Y button is pressed, they punch. But if I don't do anything, this doesn't know when to break things. So it'll just always break things. So it'll break that one too. So we only want it to break things while punching. So that's when the Y button is being pressed. That's hooked to the action. The action is punch. So we only destroy boxes while pressing Y. but not just when it touches. Coming with me. All right, so it looks like that, whoa, sensor is detecting his X position. So the apple goes away unless you catch it. So we just need it to drop when he's in the middle, which is at zero. Okay, so we got a location sensor on the person. Its X is being shown in the number. But right now it's whenever it's over three, we just need it to be at zero. That'll trigger this to destroy the box at the right time. Well, 
when it's greater than zero. <laughs> but don't move too fast. Well, I can't see much of anything. Maybe that's a hint. Okay, so where is the camera? So we can see there's a maze here. The person needs to, we need to be able to see the maze. And there's something special about this box up here. So here's the camera. We can move it around and change its viewing angle. So what we'd like is probably a, so this is a side in view. So we want this to be like here and pointing straight toward. So we want it to be up high. So toward he here and up would be Y. I'm gonna make Y go up some amount, but there is a, like a ceiling. But it looks like it's in a good place, just we need to fix the angle. Let's see. X needs to be probably zero. Which direction is that? Or it needs to be Probably plus 90 to go downward. That looks good. But now the apple's still surrounded. And it's fully enclosed in. But this box we can change. We can make it not solid and we can go through it. Visible either way. But if it's not visible, then it's more obvious you can go through it. <laughs> Do you remember what that was called? All right. We have the sticks for the free slide connector. I've had issues with this thing. Uh, but so we've got a red box that that's connected to. And this should let us move, a f relatively move um, this box relative to this sphere based off the coordinate inputs. So let's see how what I want it to move. I want to be able to move it up, up and down and left and right. So up and down is Y, left and right is X. Well, I actually thought I was going to push the apple, but breaking the box is maybe better. Gravity is optional. And so that's automatically moving left, but if gravity was on, then it would fall down and push the apple. So the only thing we can change is inside of here. So if these are on, then those coordinates, those axes are locked and will only use their inputs. So if Y is not locked anymore, it can go back to moving freely and fall. Three punches. One, two, three. It doesn't break at all right now. And we got a bunch of logic. So, looks like punch is wired up because we've done it. We have a touch sensor. Uh, that right now doesn't do anything. So it's connected to the person, but we want to know when we're touching 
Uh, I've seen the box. The uh, cylinder. So when we do touch the cylinder, when we're holding, when we're punching, that should be triggering the count. Okay, so we touch the cylinder while pressing Y, then we count up and show a smoke. Counter starts at zero, we'll go up. Now when that equals three, this will destroy right now nothing. But we want this cylinder destroyed. And the cylinder is destructible. One, two, three. I do like this one. So when we touch the platform, it's counting. But we want to fall down, but we don't want to fall down too quick. So one, two, preferably on three, it breaks. Let's see what's behind this. I was looking for a touch sensor. So, what is A? Oh, there it is. It's up there. Okay, this person, or this touch sensor is connected to the box. And it's whenever a person touches it. It could also be on the person. And, say, when the box touches it. But this way, it's this box only and not the other boxes. So anyway, A gets single signals whenever... Person touches the box. That one box. So we get a smoke effect every time. And we're gonna count upward. That's being shown. But we want that box to be destroyed whenever this count is equal to three. That'll make this true. And then this is already set to destroy boxes underneath it. It's all for those. All right, how to control a car. So this is only acceleration. If the number that goes into Accelerate is positive, it will go forward. If it's negative, it'll go backward. So if we have one button for going forward, if this just were to go to accelerate by itself, then when I press it, it goes forward. But just forward isn't enough. But if we subtract those two, then if we're not pressing Y and we are pressing B, this will be negative one. Okay, the cars drive automatically. Red car gets detected, it touches a box at their first. Blue car second. And then these boxes are getting destroyed. But we want the red box to destroy the red boxes. The red car to destroy the red boxes and the blue car destroy the blue boxes. See what it is, is, is mishooked. So we have a touch sensor. It just cares about any car. But we want to detect which car. 
So, the way the game teaches you of doing that is making a hidden object that's unique and attaching it to those. So the one in front is red. So we'll say that the red one is a golf ball. It's a invisible object that'll move with it. And the blue one is a balloon. Blue B balloon. Okay. So I can't change these connections. So we want the red one to destroy the top. So that's this one. So we don't want to check against the car anymore. Only when the golf ball passes it. The invisible golf ball. Go ahead and make sure that works. Well, I mean it does it does work. It does it does what it did before. So far as it looks. And then set the balloon for that one. So now the red car won't trigger the first set. And blue car was set perfectly to time with the apple not getting caught by the wall. Red car breaks that. I can press Y to go forward. Except that doesn't break that. So in the racing game, there's a there's a block of logic like this to try to figure out one of them's won, but that the other one hasn't won yet. And now C and D are hooked to destroy those. But if I win the race right now, red still blows up. So it's not set up for it to detect that the person wins. Okay, so for the touch sensor, for the person, that's set to B. So whenever B is triggered and A hasn't, the other car hasn't won the race yet, then we need to set that person won the race. And we'll send that out. But if I just leave this alone, It's still knowing, it still thinks red finishes the race later. So, red's not allowed to finish the race if the person already has. So if this flag is already on, then we don't want this stuff to happen. So if this flag is not set, and the red car finishes the race, only then trigger it. I think I barely got ahead of it. What this time? Okay, so the wiring's probably upright, but the red card doesn't respect our countdown. We needed to wait. Alright, so right now the car has constant acceleration, but it needs to wait until the countdown is over. So this flag means that the race has started. But the car doesn't care. Now, this is set, so the person won't move until the race has started. If I hold right, left, it doesn't do anything. We need to do the same thing with this. Um, since it's a constant, we can just use the flag value directly instead of the constant. So, while the flag is off, the car will get a zero, and then when it's on, it gets a one. Same as this. We could have anded it, but multiplying by one is, well, useless. Self-driving car. 
Probably the most complicated thing the game teaches. All right, so we get to wire this whole thing up. So see the two kind of outline cylinders? Those will be detecting if there's a wall to the left or the right of the car to figure out how it will steer. All right, so in front of the car, we can attach the sphere. And then to those, we can attach the touch sensors. We'll connect the sphere to the car. And it's probably hooked, so it will go in the front already. Connect those sensors to the car. X to X, X plus to X minus. X minus to X plus. So we got to figure out which one goes on which side, but they're going to be hooked to this. So here is X plus. Well, it's going to be hooked to the sphere. Z plus to Z minus. So here to here, which is just right. And then Z plus to Z minus. So it looks like this one is going to be over here. Um, so what we want to do is change the car's steering. So accelerate is going to be constant. But that's going to be based off of these touch sensors. So we're going to subtract them. The question is just which way. I guess one way is just to try and see what happens. So that's backwards. But either way, when one of the touch sensors is on, we'll get either a one or a negative one so that this will steer, preferably away from the wall. But why is it this way? So you want the car to steer to the right or be positive when it detects one on its left. So this is the one on this side. So when this is detected, we want the subtraction to be positive. So that should work. Okay, that's all of the regular ones. Now I haven't done these. Extra checkpoints. These will be new to me and there is a lot of them. High wire act. Thanks, Mr. Shark Bright. Wee. Okay. Oh, these are using like things we haven't even used yet. String connector. String stiffness, string length. Ties objects together with string. The string won't appear until you've connected objects to both ends. So this string can be interacted with too. We put the string on. Whoa! <laughs> it's it's up there. Okay. Not not the way we want it. I think we want the boxes to stay but make the apple elastic wrapped to the person. that work? Or the opposite? Hmm, why won't it let me connect? It seems happy enough to let me draw it. Maybe we can read a little about about that.
Wish there was an easier button to get to this. I think I passed it. String connector. I'm not sure which side you connect matters. Oh, connection points. Okay, this just wasn't clear what I can deal with. It bothers me that it shows that. Alright, so... How is the apple going to move with that moving? It may be that it needs to move like really slowly. Alright, so I want these to be like only horizontally connected. So I want this side to be connected to this side. Right now it's kind of vertically connected. So the right side of this box, the left side of the other box, and those will be elastic. Now the stiffness and whatever is already set. So let's see what happens. It's over there. I think this one would be stationary. It's not movable. And this one will get moved by that. I'm gonna try the connections the other way. I can't try the connections the other way. What if I flip these? Well, it's there. I can't believe he can walk on it. But why is it that way? Okay, on this object, I want the string to be on the left side. On that object, I want the string to be on the right side. Okay, that makes sense. Th that should also make them, like, pull together, but they're... The left one's not movable. Probably has to do with the length, too. Non-Newtonian apple. I up there. Okay, the apple is on a string. So we're still playing with the string connector. Visible, solid, string stiffness, string length. So what if I make it really long? <laughs> okay, a little less long. No, the string is in the way. I guess that's all it wanted me to do. Okay, one of the effects is for lighting. I haven't used it. It's funny you can see his eyes. Bye-bye. Okay, effect light. So it seems to always be set to on, but... It's over here. I guess I want to be able to see. Let's move it on top of the person. Or at least uh, in the middle of this set of boxes that I haven't even seen yet. Not quite. <laughs> okay. So it's, it's wanting me to connect them. So this will keep it on the person. 
So the person's lit. <laughs> but that's only so helpful. So what about the connector connector properties? Connection point. That's not changeable. Hmm. Can't really change like anything else. Okay. I can't connect it to anything else? Hmm. Notice it says this arrow. Apple is way up there. So changing my view doesn't change anything. I can only jump over to that box because I just happen to know it's there. Pitch black. So let's not connect it. Which direction is this light going anyway? It's not rotated. It's on all the time. Because it's got a constant going in. But I can make it really big. That does it. The light was just too small. Could connect with the person, but don't need to. Secret commands. So we could code something that isn't visible to do. Okay, can't jump. Whoa, flags. All right, what's going on over here? So, we have a teleporter on all the hoops. The apple is underneath the teleporter. So, whenever A happens, that'll allow the teleporter to suck the apple up. The box is just keeping it from falling away. And hear a lovely sound. So we need A trigger from all of this mess. So there's a bunch of buttons. A is in here twice. ZL. So we have to figure out what buttons to hold to get A to trigger. So A triggers when the Y button and the ZL button and this flag. So we're going to end with Y and ZL. Should I write this down? So if I press A and ZL, we can trigger the first flag. All right, I need to write it down. Okay. A plus ZL is flag one. All right, then to trigger flag two, we need to have flag one and A and ZL. So we press A and ZL twice, and then we'll have flag two. Okay. Then B and ZL and the previous flag. So we wait till after step two is done. We do the other two things first, and that gives Flag three. Then Y and ZL next after flag three is set to get the apple to freaking move. Okay. Those four keystrokes in order. Okay. A and ZL. A and ZL again. 
B and ZL, Y and ZL. And nothing happens. Nice. Um... On press, ZL is while pressed. So, press the ZL and hold first. I thought that's what I was doing, but to be sure. So it's all ZL, A, A, B, Y. Holding ZL, press A, A, B, Y. Ta-da. Second time reading it. Didn't need notes. Pinball. Nice. Oh, that would be fun to make. Okay. So cool, we got the apple automatically teleporting up when it falls out. And we just need to make the flippers work, probably to break through the walls. Neat. Okay. So we have a box, hi Tara, on the hinge connector. And the input is the angle. So we want to wire that up to a button. So this button is either L or ZL, so either trigger. It's fun, I'm going through the tests that are in the game. I made a full game earlier though. Alright, so when one of these is pressed, we'll get a minus 60 angle. And that should already be wired up. Which it is. But uh, we need this to be a positive 60 degree angle. Oh, it's a, just a completely different kind of thing. It's a lot more open. But there's not uh, nearly flexibility in terms of content like assets or text. It's more about how th making things interact. Okay. Looks like that was it, wiring up the one flipper. Man, I need to make a pinball game. Make a note. <laughs> yeah, you can make a platformer. Whoa. I made a racing game earlier. All right, so when A or B trigger, Sphere gets launched to kill the player. What was this called? Two-pronged attack. We need him to live through it. So I'm sure we can't just say you're invulnerable. That would be too easy. So right now he's moving forward. Slow half speed. And I can only connect to him. So if he jumps, when either of them are shot, that might avoid it. So this is kind of programming a little simple AI. See if that does it. Timing was perfect. One of them could have been making me punch one out of the way. Kind of thing. Naughty not D. A hammer. Wow, two cylinders actually looks better than it seems like it should. Okay. Nothing does anything yet. So we want the hammer to swing and kill the box, I'm sure. So there's a box that is invisible. It's connected with an angle to the handle. And the top is connected to the handle and that is destructive. Okay, so that's already set up so that we can send an angle in, never rotate. 
So this ro this counter is going to count down whenever this is true, which should make it rotate in. Okay, so we just need to get a signal out of all of this. We have a bunch of weird math, and we just want this to be true. So right now, not 3, false, 0, is not equal to 1. But, so not takes any signal that makes it 0 or 1, flipping the truth value. So 0 would become 1, 1 would become 0, 3 would become 0. So that would be equal to 0. And then this counter moves, which we can see even in here. So fast, just couldn't even see it happening. Helping and, well now we have a cannon. All the, the most interesting, just getting ideas of how to piece objects together. Okay, so our cannon has a launcher on it. The launcher will launch whenever this signal is true. So we have another math puzzle. So we just want this to be true. So we can enter in the value that we think it's going to be. So just like not, and only outputs zero or one. So this is not zero and this is not zero. So this is one. That's what this should be. Popular ports of call. Okay, nothing moving yet. So we want the car to accelerate forward. So another math puzzle. We want this to be true. Huh. So I've actually wondered about this. So I wonder if I go into the documentation, what it says about this. If you send in multiple values where it looks like only one makes sense. What I expect would be that they all have to be equal, but see what find. The value received at this port is used as the first number in the comparison. Signal passes through unchanged. Pairs input one and input two according to the specified conditions, then outputs zero outputs one if it's met. So this does actually doesn't say anything about multiple inputs. So we'll just have to figure it out. So are all three of these equal? Well, it apparently isn't no, because if this was zero, so I can't change those, I can't delete the connections. So we have to guess what will equal all of those. Like, do you think it would sum them to make it six? I think summing multiple inputs makes sense. Uh, Yusef, I can understand that. So, you, th this is undocumented behavior, so it's a guess. It could multiply them, but I would guess summing them. So, if it sums the inputs to a 6, the car is going to move. Nice. That's probably true with all of them. I've wondered that before. It could probably eliminate some extra node on in some behaviors. Plus or minus. What do I want this to do? So I want the bottom box to go to the right, the top box to go to the right, and after the apple's down there, the bottom box to go to the left, probably to push it back. That's my guess. Ooh, so we got a couple new math converters here. So there's the absolute value turn negative values into positives, and then an inverter to flip positive or negative the other way. But I'm not sure how that will deal with a two-step 
approach. Okay, so notice there is a teleporter here. So it's gonna grab the apple, and it's gonna send the apple down here. So I want, oh, so I'm gonna be in control. So while I'm moving it right, I want something to happen. And then when I move it left, I want something else to happen. Honestly, I mean, I feel like just directly connecting would solve the puzzle, but that that is not what they want me to do. So, I'll go ahead and hook these up. Since that's, it may go the other way, but we'll play the game. <laughs> hey, this isn't understandable from not to building up to it. All right, so what I want while I'm pressing right, so I'm going to get a 1 out of here. I want both of them to move to the right. So... Let's see. If I press... I think that's not going to work. Okay, so... If I press left... Hey, Marco. Then this will be a 1, and the box will move to the right. And that's good. Um, I'm getting the impression right now that that's not gonna be enough. So, okay, this top box, I only wanna move to the right and I don't care. An absolute value can only give out a positive result. The inverter could give out a positive or a negative result. I need this box to move left and right. So I need to hook these this way. Okay, so when I press left or right, this box will move to the right, because it's going to get a positive one. The only time this isn't going to be a positive one is when I'm not moving the stick at all. Or at least, if I move the stick halfway to the left, it'll get a plus half. This, though, this box will move the opposite direction of moving the stick. But it'll be able to go left and right. So if I press left... Well... Besides the box getting stuck... So did I put it in the right one? I want it on X. But I don't want it to move other directions. Is that a setting? Let's try it a little... <laughs> slower? Okay, it's in there now. Uh, so if I press right, notice they're moving the other directions. Okay. It's a little finicky, but... Doing the right thing. Maybe that box at the top should have been... Why is it even there? I think they should have moved that so you couldn't move to the left. Brain bender. Open the door. Well, I don't know who is... Whoa. Oh, I can only move left and right. Okay. So there is a door. Apparently there's some other boxes uh, connected to it. There's two boxes. These are the white boxes connected to the blue box. The auto box. Well, it's blue. Okay, so let's figure out how they're connected and figure out what that's going to do. Wait, there's four boxes here. Light blue. Oh. Light blue. Okay, so is this invisible? And... Okay. This is just a reference point. It doesn't interact with anything. It's not solid, it's not visible, it's not movable. Okay. So there's nothing here. Then there's two light blue doors, two light blue boxes, two white boxes. Notice it kind of wants to move as it is. Okay. Which one's which? The white ones are connected to the outside of this one. I think I can infer. And then the light blue boxes are connected to the white boxes. 
Does that make sense? So we have an invisible empty space, then white boxes are connected on the outside, and to the white box, a blue box is connected going back in. Okay, so I want to be able to do something that moves the light blue boxes, because we have a slight connector. These are the hardest puzzles. I did the I did the easier ones at the beginning, but uh, solving puzzles is meant just to test your understanding. It's trying to put the stuff together to build something on your own that the game's all really about. So, uh, that's probably still a yes. So, question then is, what do I want to move, and why? All I have is a touch sensor and a left stick. I can't touch the left left stick, so I want something to happen when I touch something. Okay, so when something touches the person. When what touches the person? Like, just here? Yeah, is there a demo? So if I do this, then he's in the touch sensor. You see it's visible, that outline there. It's not really giving me any option of what to connect. The question then is, what's it going to do? So, while he's touching it, then this will be true. And then this will be negative one. And then this one will move to the left. As you see. See, it's open and then it closes. So if I move... I can rotate it? So if I move it in front of the doors... Is he still overlapping it? Oh, that's... That is messing with me. So while it's not being touched, this will slide to one. While it is being touched, this will be zero. The doors seem to be behaving the same way anyway. Untouched or while touched? <laughs> okay, so so untouched means okay. Untouched means this is only going to send over a signal to open the door the first frame and then the signal will be off and the door closes. This contraption just means open the door. It'd be nicer to understand exactly why it means open the door. And I... I guess I can just move it so it'll auto... This makes it like an auto open door, so while the person's in the box, it'll be open. And automatically close. That's... that's actually pretty awesome. I'd like to see a little more of why. So, when we send in true, we get zero. And then this box doesn't slide, but when it's true, then it does slide. So... And this is, do the same thing, but the opposite direction. So then that just depends on the position of where they actually are, which way is what you want, but... That solves it. Material difference.
Okay. Via there, person. So the second box drops. This first box just seems to stay. We don't want this to drop. Um, but we normally would unhook movable. However, there's a zero gravity option. So gravity doesn't push it down. So it will hang out there. Now what about this one? Bouncy, slippery, floaty. What's floaty? It will float upward like a helium balloon. So it'll have reverse gravity. I thought that would still get I thought that would still fall. Is it still being pushed on? I wonder if I just need to keep walking over it. Um It ignores gravity, but it's still moving. So I would like to turn movable off, but let me try just moving quickly. Yeah, Nintendo's gonna have E3 on Tuesday. One step at a time. So we have fish with sticks that we wanna poke the boxes. They're already moving in a way that if the sticks were going through, the apple would get pushed down in the right order. Okay. So there's a one, four, and seven second delay to trigger each moving box in order. Super Mario Odyssey 2, I don't know why there's any reason to think about it. I mean, the only thing I can predict from them is that we should get information about Breath of the Wild 2. Other than that, I'm happy for surprises. Okay, so I can change the stick that is attached to them. So I just want it rotated. I want it connected a different way. Okay, so instead of the stick's bottom being connected to the fish's top, I want the I want it connected to this side. And I still think I want the bottom connected so that will rotate it around. So let's just check that one. So we just need to pick the right connection points for the others. So this one's the same. Bottom to the left. And over here. Bottom to the right. Um, that vanished. Where'd it go? Okay, so notice... Okay, the, the fish are rotated. So if I look at the bottom right one, I want the other side of the fish. So that's why it's not where it looks like it first should have been. So I do want this on the right side, and when it spins, it'll be the left. Uh, you haven't played the first game? Oh, definitely get that. I still think it's the best game on the system. Okay. Now this fish is facing forward. So I put it on the right side of the other fish. I want it on the front side of this fish. And that front side would be Z minus? Z minus. Helpful picture. There we go. I really like these puzzles. Directional Dilemma. Hmm, three different shapes, three different colors. Whoa, I hit X, but it may have just moved forward all on its own. Okay, so what's going on here? Are the shapes the same? So the blue cylinder is the same, the red box is the same. They aren't mixing colors and shapes. Uh, the Y button did do something. Okay, so here is our platform. 
that the camera is looking this direction on. So we have a thing to destroy the cylinder and the box and the sphere. And it will trigger when the touch sensor is activated. So the cylinder will get destroyed when a cylinder touches this area. Yeah, I've done everything in Breath of the Wild. Except for the Korok seeds. So we got the same setup for the others. So we have these. So if we attach those to the person and his little platform. So this looks like it's another connecting connection point puzzle. So the cylinder needs to go to the right. The square needs to go to the left because those are the touch. So the sensor shape happens to be what it's connect what what it's uh, checking for for the sake of being sane, a little more intuitive. Uh, that I would say that the last boss of the DLC is hard, but the rest is pretty expectable. I also only did it in master mode. Okay, so let's connect this cylinder to the person's box. I guess we can connect it to the... We have to connect it to the person, which is fine. So, the person's rotated, just to mess with me. So I want the cylinder connected to the person's left side. Can I change the... can't change that. So that's Z. Notice from the guide up here, Z down is the person's left side. Um, but the person would normally be standing up and down, so we gotta rotate that 90 degrees, so it's actually... I want it attached to the original side that is X minus. God, I hope that's right. So, X minus on that needs to be, I don't know, center? Probably not. So it's on there. So I'll go ahead and, instead of connecting the center, of the cylinder. So the rotation logic is right. I'll just connect the um, Z plus side of the cylinder so that will push it down more. Okay, I'll go ahead and press Y. It moves forward and that's awesome. So we got the other ones to do. Okay, so we'll attach the box to the person. Now I want the box up here. So before this rotates, I need it on the... Or this rotates this direction. So if I put it on the X plus side, rotate, it'll be up here. I want the X plus part, and I want the... Which part of the... I think that side. So then the red box is right there, and we move forward to the last one. So now I want the sphere to be in front. So that is the Z plus side, but it rotates it this way, so that is actually the Z minus side to rotate it into the front. Doesn't matter which, lots of right answers on the connection point on self. Nice. Connection points are a confusing subject, so having some checks on that is nice. Rate of a tenth of a percent. Okay. Teleporter. So the only thing I can control is this. We have randomness. So when the treasure chest is broken, we're going to get a random number. Where is A?
Oh, jeez. If that random number... Well, we gotta break the treasure chest first, don't we? Okay, so... Punch is wired up. Action is punch. Yeah, ignore the Korok seeds for your own sake. Just get all the shrines. I think that's the way to play. Okay, so we can punch, and on punch we'll destroy. This is connected so it's in front of the person. Normal setup. But, there are two things teleported in. One is the apple, one is an alien. So we want the apple and not the alien. So the random number that we're gonna get when the treasure chest is broken is between <laughs> zero is from one and a thousand. We're gonna number from one to a thousand. That's gonna go out to A. So if that number is greater than one, which is super likely, then we will, and uh, A is greater than zero, so it's actually done it. Then we get the alien. So we want that to be uh, impossible. So it will never be greater than a thousand. I could enter 999 to just flip the odds exactly. Apple. Sixteen. He's floating. Newtonian apples falling from a tree. So gravity is on, that's why I put us in the air. I can't control anything. Okay. So what is this new thing? Attract object. Wee, that's big. Box shaped. Doesn't matter if it's visible or not, but we can make it visible. Uh, so... Oh. So there's no gravity other than this. So the person is attracted to the bottom of the box. The bottom of the outlined box. So we want the apple to get pulled in. So there is over here. Gravity is turned off because it's reduced by 100%. And there's no world. So I can make this bigger. And, uh, can I change the, so I could flip this and attract the person to the top of the box, but it won't allow me to do that. If I do this, the person will actually float right there. Okay, lie to me. But if I do this, the person doesn't get affected. Okay, well that one should make sense. So what setting can I do to the apple? Visible, solid, movable, other. Okay, so if it's movable, it'll be affected by gravity. However, there is no gravity on the apple. It just floats there. It is moving downward, but that's just odd. Moving because it's interacting with itself. So if I move this over the whole thing, it still only attracts person. So now I want person and apple to get pulled to the bottom. I didn't notice I could flip that till then. Repulsion. Whoa. What's this?
Okay, so right now when it something gets in the circle, it gets pulled in. So I want to repel aliens and suck in apples. Oh, this one's awesome. Attract object alien. So I can't change anything about that, but the parameter in here is how much to attract it. So I assume if that's negative, we'll send aliens away the same amount as they were getting pulled in. That's the only thing I can change. That's neat. Rotation stations. Okay, so I want the blue one to push it to the right. I want the red one to push it down to the green one to push it to the person. It's just gonna happen to rotate exactly to where I need it to be. Notice the red one isn't even rotating. Or the sticks are not connected. And the blue one isn't rotating the way I want it to either. Okay, I want the blue one to go like counterclockwise that you would be looking at a clock as if or against the wall. Okay. So let's look at just this one. So we have an object with a hinge connection and I can change the axis that it's on. So I just want it to, so right now, um, X, Y, Z. So it's, it's rotation axis is Y right now and I want it to be Z. Okay. So now the red one, <laughs> I'm like, well, it's, uh, close to him. Okay, so I want the red bar to rotate around, but I'm a little confused which way. So the the red cylinder will be stationary. So right now its uh, axis is Z, but I want its axis to be X. Well, we want it to go through the cylinder. That's going the right way, and the timing happens to sync up. And now I want the green one to be Y. When I find it. Get over there. Photography unit. Wow, either. There's a person who's gone. Okay, whoa. Okay, so we got a bunch of boxes. Okay, so there's many cameras. Many, many cameras. This is a camera target. I have not messed with the cameras yet, but I guess I will now. This camera will point toward this Nodon's position. If it receives an input, you can shift the camera position. Which one is the real camera? Is the question. Where is... There's an alien moving well, somewhere. Okay, so the alien is going up and down, bouncing between one and two. So it looks like the camera
pretty much right in front of it. That's this one. So there's a person over here, but I want to get... Where is the apple even at? It's, we're still playing with apples, right? Hey, okay, Marco. Where the heck is the apple? Okay. I can connect it to something. Let's try connecting this camera to the apple. It's sure there. So the camera is here, and it's pointed toward what it's connected to. That's interesting. What is this? Camera angle. So this affects all other cameras? Camera position. Doesn't this have a position? These two seem to be conflicting each other. Well, I want it to zoom out. So I want to increase the field of view. Interesting camera angle. I don't see how the to the camera's actual placement and the camera position relate. It's probably position getting added to the other one. Subspace reversal shield. Okay, so it seems like we want to make it into like a mirror. So teleport A right now. That's the exit, right? So here's the entrance. But we're not teleporting anything. We want to teleport the laser. Which is this Cylinder launcher. We're launching cylinders. And when it's destroyed, a box is destroyed. Well, that's the shape of that. When the fancy object is not destroyed, then the cylinder will launch. So if we destroy the alien, the cylinder will not launch. So now we want the cylinder to fire back so the alien can get destroyed and it won't reshoot. So we need to teleport a cylinder. But here's where it will exit. Now, right now we'll preserve the shot. So I expect it to actually keep going, but if I rotated it, then we could send it back. So yeah, it continues to move to the left, and then the other teleporter keeps moving it into the teleporter. So I need to move this to rotate its... I need to move, rotate it around... The y-axis? 90? Is 
that sends it that way. Not sure about that, but we know it's not the y-axis. So I can just try the x-axis. See it be wrong. Try the z-axis. It's 90 degrees. Might be minus 90 degrees also. Huh. So it is x. Oh, the teleporter's... Oh, that rotates the teleporter. Of course, it rotates the teleporter. Okay, so... Do a minus 90. Hmm. I don't think rotating this matters. Preserve so these settings don't matter anyway. But which direction? Sends it backwards. By default, it preserves. But I want to flip it. Okay, if I want to flip it, then that's 180 degrees. I think I want to flip it across Y. If I put a stick through it on the Y and flip it, then I feel like that's correct. Hey, it did. And I can move. Wow, space. All right, since that's 20 of them, I'm gonna get up for a minute. And continue these in a, in a bit. Well, I'm glad I think you figured out uh, Yusef's problem. 
Okay. Get to the touch position. Whoa. There's a little bit more to this problem. Push down on... Whoa. Push down on R and the motion pointer appears. Then press R. The orange cylinder moves to the motion control pointer's location. The person is facing toward the upper right at this moment. Now fix this so you can control the person and properly finish the puzzle. Oh. If I can move it. And this is probably like controlling Link and Phantom Hourglass. <laughs> It'll walk toward where I'm pointing. That seems to be right. Okay, my goodness. Touch position. So, you can actually sense when someone's touching the, the game screen if you're not docked. And if you are docked, you get this mechanism to touch. Okay. Oh, it will. It definitely will. Alright, so... I want to know the X and Y position. So there's two touch position inputs. Huh. 640 by 360? That must be the resolution when you're in handheld. And it'll just make that the numbers when you're not with higher resolution. Okay. So it will take the X value, convert it to a number that matches our stage so that it goes to the point that you think you clicked on and move the cylinder um, on the ground on those to move the cylinder. Okay, so I want to know the position of the cylinder or or this, or the original touch to control the person. So, forward, backward, left or right. So we want to move to the, the person to the right if the cylinder is to his right. So I need to subtract the location of that cylinder from the person's location. So I need the person linked to the location sensor. Now we got X and Z. We're gonna take the same thing. So we'll take X, subtract that from the cylinders X, which was the touch X mapped. I assume the map is the same. It wants me to just do the math again. I have DLC games. And then the touch sensors Y will get mapped to become the cylinder Z. And we'll subtract that from the person Z. Um, so if the cylinder is to the right, then we'll get a positive number. Because we put it in first. And then the person moves to the right. So this one has to be, I'm just checking the connections are the right ones. So this is left, right. This one is left, right. So we want this hook to the X, which it is. I think we got it. So yeah, he's he's moving toward the cylinder, which is where I'm touching. So this is this is Phantom Hourglass controls. That's awesome. It scales up very nicely, DLC games. Don't be intimidated by these. These are after you've done all the tutorials. Watch your step. Okay, so I'm controlling normal again, but I can move the stairs. Oh, that's down. 
Okay, so is that the same shape? Okay, we got a bunch of boxes floating up there. I can move them anywhere I want, but they're connected. So they're, I could change, can I change how they're connected? Auto. So I can't change how they're connected. So wherever I move this one, that whole thing moves. Uh, I don't know where I want that to be, but I mean, it really looks like with these dotted lines, it's supposed to fit in here, but I'm not convinced it's going to fit in there. Let's just rotate it. So they still glued to the, s the same side that resulted on the right. So, that's all I can interact with. Okay, so connection point is changeable on this one. I guess the question is, it's not changeable on that one. Let's just see. So those are all locked, but this one I could put it in different sides. So, if I put... So I should be able to make that shape. I'm just not super convinced yet. So the middle three shapes make the middle of the bar just fine. So I want this to connect to the bottom of this. So I want the X, X negative to be the Z negative. Okay, auto. Now it's a friggin' straight line. Uh... Why would I want that? Other than that... The pegs make it so I can't just lay it down somewhere. Plus, the person can't jump. He is Captain Toad. Captain Toad Man. It definitely seems like I'm supposed to build the shape that slides in. If I put that there, like it's correct, the next box is correct. What if I just, so if I rotate it, I can rotate this. That's not what I want. I mean, I definitely want this to be a bar, so I don't want to touch the middle piece to have them connect any different. What if I rotate this? That changes how they connect? I definitely have Mario Maker 2. I mean, I've definitely played viewer levels in it a lot. I'm not convinced what this wants me to do yet. I don't feel like I'm doing anything different to it. Whoa! But why? Why did that do that? That's awesome. I just don't understand it. The setting will connect objects using the sides that are closest to each other. Okay, that's fascinating. Uh, 
That makes a lot more sense. So if I do this, those are closest. Hmm. Well, that's not true. And now... I want this to be on this side. So even, so my angles don't matter that much. It just matters that I happen to move it so that the blocks are closer there. So auto is funky. Now I just gotta get it so it falls in place. Wow. Cracking the code. Four oh four. Code is not found. Okay. Object. We want the box to be destroyed. It will be destroyed if A is true and B and C are equal. Holy crap, what's going on here? Notice it like flipped into four oh four. That's hilarious. Um, so I only have control over this constant and this counter. This counter goes from zero to a thousand, but it only will go up while it's on reset. Why is it on reset? It's never gonna count. Okay, I can put something in its left. Point of this, I can connect in and out. I can change this and connect it. Starts at zero, and A will reset it. Okay, what's happening here? On start, right after start, we set A. So we don't have A, so it does reset. 0.3 seconds later, we set A. So it's reset, and then 0.3 seconds, it's allowed to count. If it could. Hi, Autistic Gamer. So I think, so it's not wired up. B and C are the numbers that need to be equal. A is gonna be true after after I hit start 0.3 seconds later anyway, so I don't have to worry about A, I just need to worry about B and C. So I can change what B is. It certainly wants me to do this. So, <laughs> so 0.3 seconds afterward I get A. So while not A, so during the 0.3 seconds after I hit start, this will generate a random number. It'll continue to generate a different random number. Wow, 404 was random. <laughs> wow. Just because 404 means something. Um, but during the 0.3 seconds, it's gonna continue to get a different random number, which is absurd. So it stops differently each time. And that's what B is, and that's what's displayed. So I need C to equal the same thing. So what I can do is have this counter go through all of the possibilities after that stops. 
So we can say one. We can count up and have that be C. So it's going to try all the possibilities to brute force the solu solution of what the random answer is. And it will be reset until A. Because when A, it will not reset. So once it's allowed to run, it's going to every frame count up by one. And then B and C will be equal during one of those next thousand frames. And the box will go away. We just wait for the right answer. Interesting. Swiftly, then slowly. We got another number up there. Okay, so we got... Um, yeah, so the yellow boxes have a destroyer. So I want this destroyed, but not this one. Okay, so how does this get destroyed? Wait, I thought I couldn't move. No, oh, I can't do anything. I can move, though. Okay, so the person has a speed sensor. Man, it's a good thing I used this. So that gets its speed in each of the three directions. Negative for moving left. So I could use how fast the person is moving to do something. Um, so this box will destroy when the person is in front of it and something else. So whenever something is greater than two and a half. So I could make it so his speed in the X direction, which is to the right, is at least two and a half. Now let's go ahead and put it so what its speed is is displayed. So notice it's four. When I'm moving left, it's minus four, essentially four. Looks messy. Well, I'm doing the advanced puzzles. When I'm moving right, it's positive about four. So when I'm moving through the touch point, it's going to be over two and a half. So it destroys. But we have this one. So we want this not to be destroyed. Okay, this one. We want this to not be destroyed when the person touches it. So it will be destroyed if the person touches the ledge and his speed is greater than 1.5. So if I walk too fast over it, it destroys. Can I... So I just need to go nice and slow. It, it both is and isn't a nightmare. Um, I have the most trouble doing things that are that I would want to actually write code for. That is like if if A then X, else if B then Y, because you then have to do that with like math and multiplication and adding. But I found workarounds that work well. Question block. Oh, exciting. Yes, we just need to set up a program for every time Mario hits a box. We can have Mario in no time. Wow, it actually moves a l just a little bit. So there's like a slide connector on it. Okay, slide connector. It's only allowed to move a little bit just for that nice visualization of it moving. What the hell is this? Text object. Oh, okay. <laughs> I was like, this is a secret component. We're not going to tell you what it does. Okay, so the text is on the object. 
which is connected to a touch sensor. So we want to know when a person touches that, but where is it? So it's connected to Y plus. It's, its top side is connected to its bottom side. So whenever the person jumps below the box, then what happens? Then this teleporter is allowed to work. Which moves the apple into here. So this teleporter should teleport apples. But I want it to teleport not here. I want this to live inside of this box. Right? So the box isn't going to get destroyed. But it's going to sense I did it. But what about the apple? So I trust my sensor works. Yeah, it's... I mean, real development is certainly much more complicated than this. You get a lot of a base for free, but then reusing your components is a lot easier when you really write code too. But, uh... Don't let that make it sound much easier. Okay, so I can teleport... I can connect... It's letting me tele connect the teleporter to the text, which is silly, but that's the same thing as it being connected to the box. Um, so where, so the teleporter hopefully is below. We're going to connect the bottom of this to the top, so it's going to come out the top of the box. Okay. So it's launching it. So we don't want it to launch to the right. We want it to launch straight out of the box and a whole lot slower. Okay. Pop. Nice. It is a lot longer to get started. UFO catching. So when the UFO, whoa. So we want to grab the apple. Hmm. Oh geez. So this program over here is the directions. So it waits a second and then this is just a comment that doesn't do anything but it's telling us during this phase the UFO will move down and then three seconds later that flag's turned off and this flag's turned on so it waits a second, moves down for three seconds, moves left for two seconds, moves up for three seconds, moves left for six and a half seconds, and stops. Yeah, AIs, I, I having especially more than one, I mean, it does have a tutorial for doing automatic left and right steering when you're close to a wall with a touch sensor. So if I just did that, that would be fine, but I don't think that really translates well. So I don't know. I kind of like the time trial thing. If I just change it later to upgrade the car some more, to, to upgrade the car, like with power-ups on the road or something, then it'll be, I think, interesting in its own regard. Okay, so about 
this. So I can change the output of these flags. So I could say during, so all of these flags are like during this phase of the UFO's movement, I can do something. So I could make A happen during any of those phases. So all of this logic and X is just directly controlling the UFO right here. We don't have to worry about those working because they already work. Okay. So what do I want to happen? I want the alien to teleport away. Teleport a person and an apple, but not the alien. Okay, so... So it looks like what I need to do is change how the flags are wired so the UFO moves a different direction. If you notice, on A, it attracts Apple and Alien. So the... And then the Apple will get pulled in at the end if it happens to be right there. So... We always wanted to attract the apple. Okay, so this is a bit complicated. Wait one second, then for three seconds go down. And for two seconds go left, then go up. So I can teleport the person and the apple? The alien has a teleporter on him. The teleporter, I don't think has an exit. I think it just zaps it away. So the, if the alien touches the person, it'll kill the person, basically. But, question is, so I want A to attract the apple and I want to attract the apple only after it gets over to here. So it moves, it waits a second, moves down for three seconds, moves left for two seconds. Then during this phase, I want it to attract the apple. And when it moves left, I want it to attract the apple. The alien is confusing me because I'm not so sure I care. So it's doing that. Question is, at the end, it's not going to attract the apple anymore. What is it going to do? Okay, it was in range of the other one. The alien was the alien was useless. I didn't do anything with it. Phase shift. Oh, I expect these to move like a sine a sine wave. Oh my god, it is. That's amazing. I was I was I actually tried to set this up at the end of the tutorial of. Super person world, something like this. Uh, I couldn't get it to work, but I knew what I wanted to do with like two counters. There was probably a different solution that wouldn't have worked because of the alien. That would make sense. Okay, let's see. What's a going on? So, yeah, so I want to get on it. But I want the other one to rotate the opposite timing. So, this is an input to a sine wave pattern. I want to find A. Oh, that's interesting. Yeah, okay, so it's, it's looping an angle. So it's going from 0 to 360. 
going back to zero to 360. Okay. So this is converting angle to position. Right, so this is using sine cosine. This would have been much better than what I was trying to do. Okay. So it'll take um, x. So if you imagine zero as a polar coordinate system, zero would be like a line starting at the origin going to the right. So at first it's positive one. It should start at positive one. As this is zero. And then when this is 180, it should be negative one and 360, it's one. Uh, where's 360 at? Okay, so the, the angle goes this direction. That is, this is zero degrees. This is 45 degrees. This is 180 degrees or 90. 0, 45, 90, 180, 270, 360. Okay, so the first one is fine. I can only change the second one. So I need to adapt the angle that's coming in to do something to it. So I can just add a number to it. If I want the exact opposite pattern, I can add 180 to it. Night Terra. Now they move like that. Which is awesome. It's even nice and smooth for the transition by making it angles like that. Gears to the left, gears to the right. So that is higher than this. They're movable. We got a hinge connector. So it's allowed to go all the way around. It does have input, so I could specify a specific angle. Whoa. What's going on up here? Angle sensor rotation speed. Oh, so I can sense the angle of this one. What, what do I actually, of this, rotation speed? And the rotation speed, what the heck is rotation speed? Ah, okay, so as, so as this, right now the rotation speed is zero, the axis is Y, correct, so if I, in pushing this, then this has a positive number in the y-axis. Now it has a negative number in the in the y-axis. The other two are zero because it's not rotating that direction, but it could be rotating all three at the same time. So I can use that to send over the inputs to rotate that one and control it. So I want to send over y inputs. There are 50 extra ones. Uh, there's five after each tutorial. Those are pretty simple. There's only a couple that are... take a little thought. Alright, so I don't know that I wanted to ch sense anything about this one. Um, so all I can sense, send in is the angle. So what's the input to here? You can control their exact angle by providing an input. Okay. So I want the angle it's rotated around Y to go in. Do I care about the rotation speed? I don't think I do. I guess you just had to figure out which sensor to use. Cool. Three o'clock snack. 
Okay, well this clock says three o'clock. The clock on the right says noon. Ooh, angles. Okay, so there's our clocks. We got a sphere that the hands are rotated around. We got an hour hand and a minute hand. They're just affixed. This one. Wow, you are huge. Um, trying to figure out. Oh. Hmm. Where is the clock at? So we want we want A to get triggered, so the apple can fall. A is over there. I think seven tutorials is right. Hmm. Okay, so these look like the hands. There's our minute hand and hour hand, which are not rotated at all. They're just connected to a sphere. Um, I think the first one only had one checkpoint test. And the rest have five. So that's 31 plus these 50. Okay, so these are connected. So their bottoms are on the sphere, which lines up correctly. Touch sensor box. Touch sensor box. I don't know about the touch sensors going on here yet. So way up here, there's some hinge connectors. So I can wire these up so that the clock moves. So notice this is automatically rotating around. So this goes from zero to 60. And this goes from zero to 270. This takes zero to 60. And so this is, so because of the counter, this is one second to iterate all the possibilities to rotate all the way around. And then this is for a longer time interval to rotate all the way around. So we want this to be the hour hand to act like a real clock. I assume it wants us to make it act like a real clock. So I want these to not be connected. I want to connect them myself with the hinge connector. So this is the short one. So that's the minute hand. So I want to connect that and also connect that. So that'll respect the angles. Whoa. Okay, well they're rotating on X right now, I want them to rotate around Z. Every time I think about these directions, I look up here. So X is, think about rotating around an axis, like taking a stick and drilling it all the way through the cube in this side that's pointed to by X, and then like spinning the stick you just put in there, what direction it moves. So that's why it was coming in and out of the screen. But if I drill it in from the very top, which is the X, which is the Z, and spin that, then that's around in a circle like a clock. Yeah, I did them all. I'm very sure they had five. I, mean, I just did them all. Beginning of the stream. I'm in the middle of doing them all. <laughs> Alright, so those rotate around. So every... All right, fine. And then whenever it equaled three, magically they destroyed from some other thing. Apple delivery. 
Oh my gosh. A Zelda puzzle. Okay, so right now it rotate, it moves two steps, but we need it to move all the way to here. Okay. I'm hoping to. All right. This goes from zero to 61 and then stops. Then when it does hit 61, this is true. Um, so this will take that 0 to 60 and map it to go from 0 to 1 over the course of 1 second. Sends that to Z. Which is the Z position of the box with the apple on it relative to the orange starting place box. So... Instead of going up one meter, which these are, these side guide panels are one meter on the Z. Instead of going up one, I want it to go up three. So instead of mapping zero to one, map it zero to three. So it wishes up there. <laughs> now it goes to the right one. So, after this reaches 61, technically it, well, yeah, it stops at 1. Anyway, after it reaches 61, this starts to count. So it also goes up to 60. And right now it moves one square. I want to move 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7 squares. There's still more, but this is the closest. I mean, this gets closer. Hmm. Hmm. Okay, well that value gets sent to Z. Oh, I'm using the wrong map. That's another step. Okay, here, this zero to seven, I want it to be here to slide x zero to seven. Right logic, wrong component. So then after that step completes, we go back to controlling the Z. Now, I think here during the first tick, we want to start at three. And then go down to, yeah, zero. Okay, so I think that's correct. Because if I didn't flip this, then as soon as it did leg three of the journey, it would instantly teleport down and that apple's going to fall off. Now it'll go from three to zero. Oops. Two things are setting Z, which makes it confusing. Unfortunately, I think this one is winning. I'm gonna take the, that off. So when does it break?
Teleport a person or apple. Just always. Oh, this is below. Yeah, the Y is negative. So this is a below the screen, just in case thing. Notice the person's teleporting away. Okay, so it's moving this leg fine, this leg fine. I mean, that's... Unfortunately, it's starting at three, so... I think the problem is... Why, uh... What's destroying this box? I mean, I would think if it moves into one of these boxes, it would get destroyed. Ah, destructive. Let me reset this. Sixty one turns into three. Guess what I'm thinking is does the map send a signal to Z even if the value coming into it doesn't change? Like it would have to, right? If, if two signals are going into Z, what determines what comes out? And I think the problem is, oh, okay. From the, from the lesson before, it's gonna add them together. And by lesson, I mean test. So, so I want this to be zero, and I want it to end at negative three. And I do want it to start at zero. Because otherwise, before I was moving it up. That's it. Beyond the wall. That's certainly a wall. Camera follows the person. Launch box. 
it's certainly a wall. No world. Okay, so we got a location sensor on the person. Which is tied to the Y of the camera. So the camera doesn't move if I go left and right, but it does if I go up and down. Probably not related to the puzzle. When I press Y, we launch a box which destroys things. It's on the center of the person. The person is destructible, so it probably destroys himself. No. Wow, okay, I'm sending out a box. But the boxes destroy each other. I could stack the boxes. I don't think this method... So, there's also a box limit. This is a launch 10. When I launch another one, it's gonna get rid of them. If I can get 10 to stick. Okay. If I don't make them movable, then they'll just stick in the air. And then I should be able to get over if I can platform well enough. Is there anything else I can change? Well, I did change something. Um, let's see. Uh, connection points. Yeah, that would certainly help. Um... So the box is connected to the person. Okay, nothing's rotated to mess with me. So I want the bottom of that to be connected, or the top of the launcher to be connected to the bottom of the person. So that should give, you know, we might need that height too, because of how tall it is. Good call. One, two, three, four, five. Probably did. Now the camera makes total sense. Shoot him up sensation. Whoa. Target is a texture, probably. I'm so slow. But it works. I can't help it. I gotta try. Okay, so if our cursor was faster, we could move a lot faster. So we got a texture on a box, which free slides based off of a stick. So as I move the stick, that amount adds to a counter, which saves the position from frame to frame. So if I change the ranges, it can move faster. So negative one to one are the inputs that can come in from the stick, and that is disturbingly small. So let's make it 20 times as fast. Okay, how about 10 times as fast.
if I can still relatively actually do it. Nice. Not a type of game I would have thought of banking. So. That's interesting. Hiding ideas in here. Post screen subspace. Wow, that textured arrow that's rot it's looping and rotating. Oh. But it looks like right now I can only teleport from the left side to the right side and not the other way. Certainly I have to change something. Okay. So there is a teleporter. Location sensor. And there's a box that connects to something. There's a box here. And this is on top of the teleport exit. Sure, visible. What's the matter? That one's visible. So when we walk off screen, we're going to teleport to the other side, but it's going to teleport to the middle, no matter what I do. So we should, like, fall down. Even if I just walk, he should fall. Yep. Okay. But, if this teleporter were to go up and down, based off our Y position, then we can make the effect work. There's nothing in here that's too helpful. Or zero. It should be this line here. So, person is on zero, probably right now. So let's grab his location. Take a look. Can I see values? No? Well, I want the Y to determine where we place the teleporter. Now it's connected to a box. But what I want to... Hold as the teleporter. And I got another box there. I don't think I want to use this box. I'm going to have to. So, I want the slider. Can I not? I can't change that. Which connection to use for what confuses me. But. I want to slide the teleporter. Apparently that ain't gonna happen. All I can slide is a box. I can connect that box to that. Can I connect the teleporter? To this box? I don't know. I don't think I should. If I connect this box to this box... Center to center. Well, we have to slide from something. So this is our reference point. So this is going to move this box, which is visible, not solid. Too far off screen to notice it. 
and it's not it doesn't have a reference point. Now it does. So now I'll notice the box is moving up there up and down. But now I want the teleporter to be in the center of that. So I want it to center center connect. I hope that does what I wanted to do. Center to center. Hmm. Center to center. The teleporter and the box are connected. It's not solid. This is visible, but if you notice the outline, it's static. It's not moving. That's because I w I'm connected to the thing that's not moving. I wanna connect the teleporter to the box, which does move. There we go. Now notice the outline's moving too. Neat. Mario 3 World 7. Apple Excavation. I got a touch sensor that's probably destroying these boxes. Whoa, when I hold Y. I think I tr I think I tricked it by chance. Where the heck's the apple? Here's the apple. Oh. It randomly is under the boxes. That was just friggin' luck. So I could just I could just keep trying this until I happen to fall on the apple. So we get a random number between zero and seven, zero and six, which is how many boxes there are. It'd be awesome to just randomly freaking find it. <laughs> How much patience do you have? Alright, that number is translated. Somehow. so that we move, we connect this box to be this distance from this box. So this is the X minus this way, and that's the Y up this way. So I'll assume the numbers go all the way. So it's random. Now, I guess we can make it I guess we're going to make it so that we only can destroy the one with the apple underneath. So when you press Y, we're going to destroy boxes. Touch the person. So is that what's visible? What's freaking visible? It is the touch sensor. So we want to check if it touches an apple. I think. Now... Hi, hi. 
So when the apple is touched, maybe we get a light. That light is on the person. So it's not so, it's not that I can only destroy those boxes, but that could have been a different thing. But now I'll get a hint of the light. Let's see if we find it. There's the light. I just want to make sure it doesn't like light up again. Interesting. Fluffy friend. Now we're gonna make him follow us. Oh wow. Gonna stop. It seems like it's solvable already. I'm gonna be upset. Because Okay, I can't get over the wall. So here we have our platform, then we have a switch. Whenever a fluff ball touches the box, what's this? An arrow. Oh, that's the arrow pointing down. It's like hovering above it. Then the wall will get destroyed. And we can get to the apple. So, so far nothing fancy about it. So what can I do with this fluff ball? So I think, yeah, I think the goal is to make it follow us. So on the person, we have a location sensor. X, Y, Z. We're gonna do stuff to control the fluff ball. Now the fluff ball is visible, but it's, con it's attached to an invisible moving box and we can give it its coordinates directly. So notice that's like way over there. So I got two location sensors so I want to see the difference in position um, from the person to the fluff ball. is what I would guess. Okay, so this is already the location of the fluff ball and this is the location of the person. So now I wanna send in, so I do have two subtractions, so I don't care about moving in the Y direction, I care about the other directions. So I want the fluff ball to move to the right if the person is to the right of the fluff ball. So I'm going to take the person's X, subtract the fluff ball's X to give the box's X. I'm going to take the person's Z, subtract the fluff ball's Z to give the box's Z. That is very magnetic. Yeah, the X that it gives to it is its speed, it seems. I'm not gonna make it to the side. <laughs> Shoot. Okay. I'm gonna kick the ball into the alien and then the lever platform will just happen to fall on top of that box. Just like that. Okay. So we have a slide connector. We have a box. Visible, solid, movable. So is there a string connector? Hmm. The Y button. It's getting multiplied by minus 0.8 for something. I don't see any obvious place to connect that to other than 
yeah, the slide. So it wants me to do that. So when I press the Y button, it will send minus 0.8 into here. So I'm assuming if I connect that to these, well, no, it's the person, person in the wall. So I'm gonna somehow mimic a punch by pushing the wall away from me. So when I'm not pressing Y, it'll be a distance zero from the connection. Decide to connect these still gets to me. How do I connect to the person? Oh, the soccer ball. Hmm, but it doesn't let me connect there. So, person, slide connector. Okay. It wouldn't let me hook it up wrong. But I still don't understand which way is which. The slide connector is controlling this, so this should alter the Y of this. This is usually controlling, accepts control from, is how I read this. But how is it connected? Why is making me jump? I don't know that I can do anything about that. Okay, so notice the box is is touching his nose. When I hold Y, it is not touching his nose. So the slide connector is Y, which is probably wrong. It needs to be X. That's wrong too. But why is it not X? Oh, okay, from the person, I want it to move forward from the person, which is Z. It's X when I'm looking to the right, but then the person has changed his rotation. So from its connection to it, it's Z. Now, it's just making it work. I'm left, you're down below. Right stick doesn't do anything. Okay, so for this player, we have, oh wow, they separated up and down separately. Now it's, okay, this is a different way to do the up and down stick. This is adding up to be the same as the up and down stick. Weird. So if I press left, it's one point, it's one. But normally it would be negative one. So it inverts it, and then I get normal controls again. Okay. So this is with the uh, right stick. Analog left stick, oh. So this is the, so notice the number two is rotated over there. So what I need to do is control both of them with one stick. So when I press right, 
I want that to actually be down over there. So that's why the sticks are separated. All right, so huh. person is here. So when we get multiple inputs going in, it's going to add them together. Okay, so I want I want right to actually be negative one. So let's flip right, and we'll add that to his. Forward, backward. And that works. Left does not make him go backward, though. Um, you notice I'm hooking these to forward, backward, even though it's left and right. Now when I do down, I want that to be left. So I want down to be negative. So it happens to visually be laid out the same way here. That'll go on left to right. So now, I don't even have to look at red. I can just look at blue. Nice. A size or two smaller. The human is a little too big. I feel like what's going to happen here is as I move to the left, he needs to shrink. As I move to the right. Or we're just going to shrink him, period. But I feel like there's a location sensor involved. Because that makes it harder. Or it's going to be worse than that. Okay. When I press the Y button, half a second later... Um, this teleporter will teleport a person. Press. Okay. Y is also hooked to do his action, which is turn. So I do have jump, if that matters. I can attach things. What is all this? Oh, we have another person. So we're gonna transform the big guy into the little guy by warping it in place. So this teleport entrance. So both of these teleporters get triggered after the half second turn. So B has an exit on the teleporter. So this is the one for this person who's falling to the abyss before the teleport happens. And I guess this teleport exit can be on the apple? Or I guess the exit can also be on the person. And then we also want to teleport the person away. Wow. Oh, wow. Okay. I don't want to run that far. He actually just visually shrunk. I'm surprised he visually shrinks. I'm not sure about that yet. Power punch. Okay, so I can punch, in case that wasn't clear. Um, okay, so we're gonna walk through what this is doing. Is there anything else I should look at first? Oh, extending object.
Ah, uh, true. He does shrink out of existence, so it's a visual trick that the other one that the other one grows from a dot, while the other one shrinks into the dot. Extending box. How does this work? So this changes the x size of that, I assume. I would like to I would like to read it. I can stretch out any object. Stretches or contracts objects that extend along the x axis according to the input received. An input of zero will cause the size to remain at the size. A positive input will cause the size to lengthen, but lengthening is capped out at 10 meters. So it will add the X to its X size. A minus input will cause it to contract as far as zero. So it will go negative until it's not there. Yeah, I could do that. And it, I was just thinking it could make a wall that's much bigger than I could put with one box. So I wouldn't have to copy and paste them. But then I would have to still have three nodons, so I would have a constant and a stretch and the wall itself. So it's probably not worth it. Anyway. We're going to stretch up to 9.2. As I hold the button for one second, as I hold the button, counter goes up, up to 60 and stops. But what does that have to do with the apple and the boxes? So there's a box destroyer connected to the person. Its connection point is... His front. His front. So whenever this happens, I am allowed to destroy the box. I don't know what the extending thing has to do with it yet. Because this is connected to the person, not the box. The box... So the Y button just makes a sound all the time. Well... Um... A smoke effect. I don't know what's I don't know what's making the sound. Damage. this counter equals 60 destroy the box so I have to build up his power all the way to the arrow and then I might be able to destroy the box but then a so constant 60 And I can add this counter to it so that add goes from zero to sixty. If it was subtracted, so A will also reset. counter. So what it wants me to do is hold Y and whenever the whenever it reaches the arrow, that's the moment I can break a box and it resets to make it charge up again. To give you like a special charging move.
I just don't know about this knot. Okay, good. I can get rid of that. <laughs> okay. I don't think I want this, though. I want equals 60. Okay, so when the counter has equaled 60, I want it to reset. When the counter does not equal 60, I want it to reset. Yeah, that doesn't make any sense. Let's stop the resetting and let's see about this box destroying part. A. So A triggers the box destruction and the reset. So we gotta solve the whole thing at once. But why the not? Okay. I don't think that's it. I want to directly connect this to here. Or I want not not. I feel like it's gonna be this. I don't really have a reason to say that other than it's a weird choice. False will mean it never happens. So this would be reset as soon as it's got a positive value. So it doesn't do anything. You can also use this. Map zero 01 to zero 03. And send that into the action. the hell is that doing that for? I mean, I I can press Y. But the power bar is not building up anymore. Because it's getting re... Now I don't know why it's not building up. When I hit Y, counter builds up, and it extends the gauge, which is just visual. And then when it equals 60, and A is triggered, destroy the box. No idea why I would map want to map a one to a three. And add it to the Y button signal. Action celebrate. Why would I want to celebrate with a four? To confuse me, probably. Um, 
Probably. That probably makes sense. Um... Okay, so whenever Y is let go, we trigger the action. So while I'm holding Y, it builds up. So I just have to keep holding Y, but when I let go of Y, it'll reset. That's actually perfect. So when I let go, it resets. It'll stop there. Now I get an action effect. That's it. Fireworks show. Two of them. Okay. What is all of that? Ignore that. So whenever A, B, C, or D are triggered, Show the right fireworks. When F is triggered, destroy this box. When E is triggered, destroy these three boxes. Apple is in the middle. Okay, so that also, this destroys the top box and this box, this destroys the bottom boxes. So I do need both E and F triggered. We have the apple to fall. Person ain't moving. E and F are those. Something happens and then a second later, E and F. So when, so we want all four fireworks to happen at the same time. So to get uh, E will trigger when B, C, and D are firing, 1.8 must be the length of time for the fireworks to go off. So this is an easier problem to solve. F is all of them at the same time. So I want all four fireworks to go off. So we count up to a thousand. We change that into zero to one. So we go to zero to one slowly. So what is this? Marker display, light up how line, bullseye compatible. All right, what are you? It looks like it's a choreographed thing over time, which is, Interesting. Like you could do that with other uh, like flag timing triggered things, but that simplifies it. If I can figure it out. Um, and it is actually listed here. Can I go to the search please? Marker display. The input determines the marker's display. It might be degrees. That's how the marker should be displayed. It displays a marker that moves in a line from left to right based on the input value. The left edge is zero, the right edge is one. Okay. So 
I can move. That one. Like, that looks like the solution. Activates bullseye node on. Light up how. So why do these... So what is this? Bullseye. Okay. Triggers bullseye. So, bullseye shape. Circle or rectangle? If the bullseye node on outputs... The, it will output a number that represents the amount of the marker that overlaps with it. So if it's a if it's a circle, notice the number. It only activates from here to here, and it will be a bigger number here. It'll be a one right here. It'll be a zero right here that it sends out to A. All of them in this line send them to A. So we've made a fireworks... Well, I sure didn't make it. Fireworks show. When the line overlaps the marker. But it's only the same four fireworks. They aren't getting teleported in or anything. So I moved one of them so that it overlapped the others. So we watch a fireworks show and... An apple better fall. So the bottom blocks would have done it if I didn't do anything. There's the four. Yeah, that was much more a tutorial than a puzzle. 10 second challenge. Well, that's a surprise. can't jump. When does it start? It only starts when the person touches the floor. Okay. Y button while pressed, but make it a on press just because we need to show that this exists. So, when you press Y, you can destroy a box or an apple, because you might really want to destroy an apple. So that's attached to the person. Okay. We also have a delay timer that will take your... <laughs> That will wait 0.01 seconds, but then it will output for half a second. So... If I output that to destroy the box... I don't think that's going to do what I want it to do, though. So instead of me just holding the button for half a second, I can press it and it will hold the button for half a second. But because that's going into a trigger from zero, it's still only gonna turn that back into a button press. Oh. I see. So I press Y, it outputs for half a second, and then after the timer's completed, it's allowed to trigger again, so I automatically get half second punches. That's the only thing I can do here. But that's very slow. I can sure hit it faster than that.
I'm not sure what it wants me to do. We can launch a hundred. Can I change this? Oh. Okay. That turns my button hold into auto presses every tenth of a second. Okay, we're gonna make that really fast. <laughs> wow. That's how I felt like when I played boxing on Wii Sports. Phantom apple. There's a little apple down there. Can't walk forward, but I'm sure I would walk off the platform. So when something is touched, We're going to teleport the real app. The real apple into B. Which is up here. But when what is touched? I guess when it's not connected, that means anywhere. A little confused by that. Sure about that touch sensor. Like, I don't think I can draw a connection anywhere. Oh. We're gonna check when an apple touches it. We're gonna warp the big apple that I can't touch down to here. This teleport is A. We're going to make this one accept it. But when does it teleport? Should be always, right? Teleport an apple. So it's gone. Now, when that apple comes out here, then teleport B. That's B. B teleports an apple. I don't know what the not sensor is for. Oh. But then A is a problem. So, I only want to teleport an apple away while
allow that? I mean, I'm trying to figure out why, though. I'm pretty sure it's right. While an apple is not touching here, teleport an apple. But we teleport the apple through. It's here. Does it not move? It doesn't move. Okay, so it doesn't fall away. So the apple floats here, continues to touch it, which turns off this teleporter. Haunted house. That's a pretty good effect, really. <laughs> oh my god. Okay, top down. We have four teleporters that are always active teleport a person into A. Two of them I can change. When I touch a tuna. Okay, a tuna is attached to the person. So basically the same thing. Touching a person, touching tuna. So when a person, tuna, a tuna person touches this, then A, which is right here, the apple is teleported into H, which is away. Play spooky light. Trigger a flag, but then only as soon as you do it, why is there a timer here? This is this is just a mechanism, which I think could have been done in two steps, um, just to play the sound and light instantly on teleport, so it doesn't just keep playing. Ah, the timer just keeps the effect and light going for a second. I still don't think the flag is necessary, though. Um, yeah, this makes sense now, because then the the effect won't trigger again because we already saved it into the flag. All right, the whole system up there makes sense. When a tuna breaks... How's the tuna freaking break? Um, anyway. Teleport the person. Oop. Teleporter B. So... Teleport entrance can be B. And that jumps us over to here. What about tuna? Why can I edit this? I mean, sure. I mean, why? Why the heck not? So I deliver the tuna to the hoop. The hoop has a destroyer and can destroy a tuna. Not a fish. But tuna. When the tuna destroys, we will play a, a sound on the hoop.
Okay, so we've destroyed that, the tuna. Then I need to go back to the middle. So teleporter D can work because this only teleports a tuna. If I walk this way, ah, the, tel the tuna is attached to me though, so I guess it still does it. So as long as this goes to D, this won't trigger now because the tuna isn't attached to me. Logical Labyrinth. They move up and then I can push them. Okay. We've got a number one. We've got a bunch of wormhole signals. We add them together and not the sum. So that's only the case if A and B are off. Will we move the box on Z? So if I set A or B, this box does not move. But notice these letters also control the other things. It looks like I'm okay on B. So as long as I don't touch C, this box should be fine. So I'm gonna touch D. But I need to touch C and D to flip this input to the knot. I have to do both C and D. So that might mess up something else, but I'll go ahead and do that. Because I think that's not flexible any other way. That's the only permutation of the flags that's going to make the bottom right not do, it, do the wrong thing. So I'm going to go ahead and kill A for the moment. So um, let's look at this one. So C and D are both on. So we do not want this to move. We want this to be false. We just want either not C or B. So I can't change C. C is always true. So this will be false as long as B. I've gotten lost on true false though. C is true, so this will move as long as this is true. So as long as not B, this is moving, so I have to set B. But then I think I have to not set A. If I, if I don't set A, then this is false and that won't move. And then here, uh, we want this to be false, so we want A plus B to be not zero. So as long as A or B is set, then this will not move. Man, converting like regular logic like or into different things would be tough stuff. The barriers to success are all in your mind. You mean it's invisible and I can just walk through it? Certainly not. 
Okay. So it's there, and it ain't changing. But... Uh, why does he need to be solid? But will he touch the apple? And what is this? Teleport exit. The apple's up there. I'm sure if I'm not solid, I can't. Touch it. I'm going to make him invincible because I just can. So there's another person. So when I press left, right, I'm going to also move him. Regardless of if I move the first one. So this could teleport a person into A. And I can control that person. Hmm. Are they linked? No, left, right's left, right. But this is a flat box, and if I move up and down, he probably falls off. So you had to know the secret code. Run the gimmick gauntlet. No buttons do anything. Oh, more friggin' flag nightmares. If I wasn't solid, I could have seen him walking across. But it wasn't necessary. But yes. Hi Lucario Knight. And it is definitely night. Um, so when I trigger these, it will teleport those away. Okay. Our teleporter will do the television and the apple. Okay, so let's not just trigger everything. Okay, so the A button can make the television go away, but then I won't press it anymore, so the apple will roll through. We come here, we have a crate. The crate teleporter only does the crate. So there's no reason not to always have that on. I could hook it to the A button too. So this signal makes the counter count down. I think it's fine if that always goes. We just want past it. Now what's going on here? So teleport object B is output. So where is the teleporter for B? So B is the crate. Crate goes in. The crate isn't movable. So the crate moves down there and it's in place. Yeah, yep. I'm a few hours in. I press A, but uh, yeah, it's already there. So then I gotta figure out the bottom right corner. So there's teleporter D. So on another button press, I'm gonna move the crate with B. I 
over. So I press A, that goes away. If I press B, the crate goes over there. Now what about this though? E teleports the apple, so I don't want to set E at all. So make the TV go away, wait for the crate, and I'll press B. Oh, that's grabbing it. I didn't notice the attract. So E sends the apple in, and E sends the apple out. So I could have that constantly working too. Or I could tie it to the D button, which is B. So when I press B, the crate moves over and the apple jumps. close. Stepping across. So the apple's automatically moving. I can't move the person. Whoa. Okay, so there's a bunch of timers. I can change their durations, it looks like. The apple's moving constantly to the left. The apple's attached to a moving sphere that moves at a constant rate. The teleport entrance A jumps to here. So we're going to move that, then move this, then move that. So the question is, how fast should it go? So it's moving at 0.8 meters a second? I don't know. It seems about right if the box is one meter. It's 0.8. So it moves one box for one second. So I think I make these about a second apart. And they're all chained already. I feel like that's all there is to it. Okay, so I need to wait one more second on the start, then the rhythm should be good after that. That timer didn't help because I looked at the velocity of the moving object. Stepping across hard. Now we only got three timers. It's still moving at the same rate, so I want the same numbers, but I have less tools. So on start, we wait two seconds. After two seconds, we do A, and we wait one second to do B. We also well, don't know.
So those are showing the signal I'm sending to the teleporters. After four seconds, we can trigger D. Figuring out how many seconds each needs to go. And then making the wires work. So this is two. Yeah. Maybe two, three, four, five, six, seven. I can get those numbers by adding these numbers. And I can trigger them extra if the block hasn't moved into it yet. So A and B is good. Do I also want that trigger itself? I kind of want that. After two seconds, wait one second, and then two seconds later, I'll have five. Two, three, four. Uh, two, three. I want two seconds to trigger itself. So this, I don't know what that is. I think the I think the DE flashes are correct. I just now need to get a three. I need a three trigger somehow. Also, that's not even wired up. So A is 2, and C is 4, but C can get triggered. Man. that hooked there. After two seconds, trigger A. The only way to do three seconds is that. After four seconds, Trigger C. After four seconds, trigger one to trigger D. D could get triggered on three and that's probably fine. Thank <laughs> you. 
I don't know how to explain that, do I? Please don't make me. Get the apple! Wow, it's like the first one. <laughs> oh, nothing's attached to the wall, except for the one that matters. Okay. Would you like to jump? Wouldn't you like to jump? Okay, so those will stick to the wall. However, okay, now that will stick. Now, what about this? We have a counter from zero to a hundred, a zero to a thousand. I mean, it doesn't, it doesn't stop. I could change it. I don't know what that's gonna help me with though. I mean, you might as well loop or bounce or something. So what is this box? Not visible, not movable, it's just a reference point. Oh, I can move that box. But it has to be movable. But I can connect it. remove its range then the counter doesn't matter X will be frozen it should stay in place that wasn't that bad perplexing paradox last check <laughs> Why? Why? Here, let me introduce you to the puzzle clear note on. It's what solved all of these puzzles, but we never had to touch it. Now we do. Let's push the A button. That's just a ripoff. That's just so sad. Did it! I did it! Did you see that? I did it. That's funny. I wanted more from 50, but I'll take it. I'll take a joke. I doubt there's any challenges left that you couldn't steamroll over with your awesome programming skills. All right, these were these were fun. I'm really glad they they were here. They really made this game for me. I mean, the game makes the game, but they were nice. Yeah, we could have made a moving platform with that. I could have let it move all the way and then jumped off across it with timing. All right. Well, there was a lot there. Really cool game. Yes, uh, system. Is it, is it really a game? It's a game building game. Well, these were certainly a game. All right, well, I will be doing more programming soon, I'm sure. And I certainly look forward to playing other people's stuff. I've just got the one thing shared out there so far, which I'm not gonna mess with now. All right, well, that'll do it. Hope everyone has a good rest of your night, if it's night where you are. It's night where I am. So thanks for watching. If uh, you found this looking for some help with something, I hope it did help. And 
See you later.